Hi, and welcome to Lunch with Lisa, where I cook quick and easy healthy meals. And today, I'm gonna show you how to make an 1896 coffee cake. It's Lunch with Lisa. Hi, I'm Lisa, and welcome back to my decade series where I'm cooking through the decades. I'm just choosing one or two dishes from each decade from the 1900s to now to showcase our past and food, why not? And then I'm modernizing them a little bit sometimes, or sometimes I'm cooking them just as is. But I like to make things a little bit healthier, but not with the sweets. I like to keep those decadent. Don't put healthy in front of my desserts anymore. I'm done with that. I wanna indulge. So for the decade 1900 to 1910, I pulled out my Fanny Farmer 1896 book because I'm sure they were still using it by 1900, hopefully. I don't know. I don't have an updated version, but this one I do have. And I just looked through the desserts and I came across a coffee cake recipe and I had no idea that people actually put coffee in coffee cake and that's why it was called coffee cake. I just thought it was something you ate with your coffee. <laughs> My mom did not make coffee cake with coffee growing up, so bless her heart. Yes, I get it. I'm kind of dumb when it comes to that, but hey, you learn something new every day and you know, you only have space for so much information. So anyways, pulled this out, read the instructions. It's pretty fun. Let me share this with you. For your 1900 coffee cake recipe, you're gonna need a quarter of a cup of butter. Room temperature would be great because you're gonna cream this. Half a cup of sugar, half a cup of raisins. It says seeded and cut into pieces. We don't have to seed our raisins anymore, woohoo. But in the instructions on how to mix a butter cake, it says to soak your raisins. So go ahead and soak those in some cold water. It doesn't have to be hot. Half a cup of molasses, a quarter of a cup of boiled coffee, I just used about a half a teaspoon of this instant espresso and mixed it with about a quarter of a cup of water. Two eggs, room temperature. Two and a half cups or 300 grams of flour. Three teaspoons of baking powder, which is one tablespoon. It's a lot of baking powder. Half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of allspice, and you're going to grate half a nutmeg. Now it says to follow the instructions to mixing a butter cake. And basically you cream the butter, then you slowly add in your sugar, and then you're gonna add your eggs, all your liquid, the coffee and the molasses, and then you can add your raisins somewhere in that. I waited till the end. I probably should have added the raisins right after I added the sugar, but no worries. Then in a separate bowl, you're gonna mix your flour with all the dry ingredients, mix those really well, and then dump that in the very last thing and mix it until just combined. You don't wanna over mix this because it's gonna make your cake too tough. Then you've lined a baking pan. This is just an eight by eight or nine by nine metal baking pan with some parchment paper and butter that so nothing sticks. Then you're gonna dump your mixture straight into your pan. And we're gonna put that in a 350 degree oven. I set the timer for about 30 minutes because I wasn't sure how long to cook this. There was no heat or time instructions. So after about 30 minutes, I tested it and it was still wet towards the bottom. So I left it in for another seven minutes and when I tested it with a toothpick, it came out clean and so I pulled it out of the oven. Then I immediately took it out of the pan and let it rest and cool. And now we have this lovely coffee cake and it it's pretty stiff as you can see. Um, it's gonna taste like molasses, I bet. And yeah, we're gonna cut this up. I think it's gonna need some whipped cream or something to top it with. Okay. Cuts beautifully, it's pretty dense. I'm gonna make some uh, small pieces. To be a nice little treat to make with your coffee. I also thought about making a brownie recipe because there is a brownie recipe in there and it seemed kind of interesting, but I went with the coffee cake because I was really curious about how this turns out. All right, so I'm gonna pick a piece here from the middle. There we go. Look at that. Okay, so let's dig in. Mmm. I can definitely taste the cinnamon and the molasses. The raisins give it a nice little texture. Don't really taste any coffee. Kind of starting to remind me of gingerbread because of all the molasses. No ginger, of course. Pretty good. I mean, it would, 
it really would go good with some coffee. I don't hate it. It's interesting. For the shot, it, it actually would go really well with a Thanksgiving meal. So, timely. <laughs> <laughs> Try it out today and tell me what you think. Leave a comment down below. It's interesting. I like it. Good. It's light. Even though it's like it holds together really well. <laughs> it's light. It's good. Just don't overmix your batter. Now, this is what coffee cake should be. This is what I remember it to be. It's this stuff. It's so good. It's cinnamony. It's got some it's got some nutmeg in it, which I would actually leave out next time. I don't like the nutmeg. But cinnamon, brown sugar, flour, butter, tons of brown sugar, salt, baking soda, baking powder, uh, and sour milk or buttermilk. So good. Or you could leave out the buttermilk, just use regular milk and leave out the baking soda. Mm. Goes good with milk or coffee. Oh yeah, way better than that 1900 cake. I had to make some, I just had to. And if you like this recipe, you're gonna love my next one when I dive into the 1910s. See you in my next video. Hi, and welcome to Lunch with Lisa, where I quick, where I quick cook an easy meals. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to Lunch with Lisa, where I quick, mother. <laughs>